Hello, I'm Lisa Gray, Executive Director with the Simsbury Chamber of Commerce. Thank you for joining us for Chamber Chat. I'm here today with Karen Hanville, who is the Station Manager of SCTV. And SCTV is our featured member for the month of December. Welcome, Karen. Thank you for having us. Thank you for featuring SCTV. Certainly. This is a little different for you, sitting in that position for a change, right? It's yeah. a little less comfortable yeah. sitting on this side of the camera. Oh, well. we're going to try to make it really easy for you. Thank you so much for, for joining me today. I do appreciate it. So tell us how you got started in community television. I started as a volunteer when I was um, home with my children, young children at the time and uh, started as a volunteer, um, ran a camera, learned how to edit, and as um, I spent more time down here in Simsbury, there was an opening for a part-time position, which was um, changed to an operations assistant in the office, so I didn't have to just um, answer phones. I was able to learn how to um, assist the station manager in his absence, and when that position opened up, um, I did move into that position when my children were a little bit older and um, could do a full-time job. Okay, so that's interesting. So you had no uh, professional background in television before, but just an interest in it, huh? My degree is in environmental earth science, and about the closest I ever came to anything in communications was taking an introduction to radio broadcasting okay. class in college. So, wow. right, the rest was sort of on-the-job, hands-on yeah. uh, training. Well, it was obviously the right move for you. It's That's been fun. wonderful. Yeah. Great, great. So how long has SCTV been on the air? When did it start? SCTV came about in 1984. Mm. Um, there was a, um, a dedicated group of volunteers that did a lot of work to set up that uh, station at the time. Um, and this was back when cable companies first came into existence. And as a payback to the community, they needed to provide a community access station, or PEG, uh, which is public education and government. Mm -hmm. That was actually uh, in, in the law that they needed mm. to do that. But yes, so about 1984. Okay. So what do you do here as station manager? Is there a typical day for you? Not a typical day. Um, I mean, it depends on what's on the schedule. I mean, it could be uh, production uh, in the studio. Um, if at the beginning of the month, I'm putting in all the scheduling for the programming to air on the channels. Um, it could be training. It could be checking out equipment, uh, trying to get crews, um, and overseeing the editor and um, the administrative assistant um, as far as putting calendar notices up and that sort of thing. So it's really a variety of things. I, I'm also um, responsible for making sure the equipment is in working order and that the station is clean and yeah. all, all sounds, that stuff. Sounds like a huge job, but you do have other employees here, is that right? Yes, I have a part-time administrative assistant and a part-time editor slash operations assistant. Great, and, and I understand there's a board of directors that sort of oversees the operations of the station? Right now it's a 13-member board, and of course they're uh, responsible for policy making and for the financial management of the organization. So everybody else is volunteer? Everybody else is volunteer, whether it's um, a producer of a program <coughs> or the camera operators. Uh, the directors, um, and there are some other volunteers that do do some editing at home and then will just submit their programs to us. Most of the stuff is done in-house here, but, um, but yes, so board is volunteer and pretty much all the production is done by volunteers. And you have more than one channel, is that correct? Yes, yeah. so we have three channels. Uh, the public channel is the channel that um, if you produce a program, it will go on the public channel. The and education, that's this channel. And that's yeah. this channel, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the educational channel is for schools um, or arts programs, and the government channel is for anything to do with government, municipal meetings, um, election coverage, um, when that's happening, and, um, but yes, so three channels. And so who can see those channels? 
Who are your viewers? So the, the three channels are carried on Comcast as three separate channels, <coughs> 5, 95, and 96. Mm -hmm. And those are seen strictly by the subscribers that live in Simsbury, the cable subscribers. Mm -hmm. Then we are also carried on Frontier, um, which is a little bit different. They don't cover, they don't carry us as channels. They, um, if you go to channel 99, you choose the city and then which channel that you want. It's a little bit more like a web application. And that's actually um, available throughout the whole state of Connecticut. So any access channel that is part of Frontier is shown on that channel 99. Mm -hmm. And um, But if you live in New London, you can still see the Simsbury channel. Oh, okay. This set up a little bit differently. I mean, in addition, of course, we do have our website, mm -hmm. which has all of the programs that we've produced, not everything that's on the channel, because mm -hmm. some of the stuff that we run on the channel are outside programs oh. produced at other access mm -hmm. stations. But anything that is produced here in Simsbury, we also have on our website and can be uh, watched as an on-demand mm -hmm. uh, type thing. Okay. So is Simsbury unique in having a community television station or do most communities have a television station? It is unique in the sense <clears throat> that it is three channels for one town. It is, mm. that's not that common. Mm -hmm. It is set up that way in the Greater Hartford franchise that we are part of. Um, but if you go to different parts of uh, Connecticut, there may be a regional station, and it may even be run by the cable company as opposed to a nonprofit organization. And so in, in Connecticut, I would say probably most towns are represented by some type of an access station. Um, if you go around the country, it is different from state to state depending on um, their, their legislation and funding. I mean, they, they've eliminated PEG in some states pretty much altogether, mm. which is um, a, a, a sad thing yeah, happening around the country. Yeah, yeah. But right now in Connecticut, we're, we're very lucky mm -hmm. that um, we are still being funded. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So what type of programming do you have, typically? Well, so on the public channel, uh, again, these are series, that, um, programs that are produced by uh, members of the community. And uh, at, at this point, we have um, over 20 series uh, programs. And so that ranges from exercise and yoga, real estate, poetry, uh, a radio broadcast program, things about the bike trails, um, a couple of series from Central Connecticut State University. And then we have a lot of one-off programs, and it could be sports, could be music, uh, lectures. Um, recently, uh, a program about the ABC House. So, I mean, again, there's um, a lot of individual programs that are on, and that's all on the public channel. Um, in addition, we've got um, some programs um, from the town of Simsbury, for example, the um, police department recently did a, a security survey program, and the um, public works department had a, a video about um, how they do paving mm -hmm. in, in the mm -hmm. town, and hopefully getting something together mm -hmm. about uh, snow removal mm -hmm. uh, as well. Um, we do um, we did stuff for the um, local candidates prior to the election period, and. Um, it's really a little bit of everything, so it, something for everyone. It's a variety of yeah, stuff on the public variety. channel. On, mm -hmm. And on the government channel, of course, it's um, essentially the municipal um, town meetings. And at this point, on a regular basis, uh, we have volunteers covering nine different um, town meetings mm. um, at, this, at this time. So that's a lot going on. So how are you funded? How are you able to do all that? Um, the state of Connecticut sets the per subscriber rate annually. And at this time, it's like about $8 and a few cents mm -hmm. per household. Mm -hmm. So over the course of a year, as a few cents taking out, uh, 
um, add it onto your bill, and you can actually see that as a peg fee. Oh, okay. That's what that is, okay. along with all the taxes that they all have right. on there. Um, and so less than $10 annually per household is what SETV receives uh, for funding. That's our base funding rate. And again, that's set by the state of Connecticut. And we as cable subscribers are paying for that, you're saying? Yes, it is actually part of, um, okay. uh, yes, part of the okay. cable package. Okay. Oh, did not realize that. Okay. But still, that's not very much money, it sounds like, uh, over the course of a year for all the things that you do. So do you do other fundraising? We do um, look for individual donations um, from folks. We usually send out a fundraising letter. Um, and if you don't get a fundraising letter, you can donate on our website. Um, we also will accept donations from businesses or from civic organizations. Uh, and uh, we do a little bit of grant writing uh, when we can. It's, that, that's a, a lot tougher um, mm. uh, thing to, to do without having a professional grant yeah. writer. Yeah. Um, and, and it seems that we are in an unusual category where um, you know, we're not providing housing or food for needy people, so it's, right. it's a little harder to categorize <laughs> right. where, you know, right. what kind of grant. Um, but, but yes, yeah, so we can mm -hmm. do grant writing and individual um, fundraising. Okay. So it costs nothing to come in and produce a program such as this. Correct. So what could someone expect if they're coming to do it for the first time? How does that work? Well, if somebody was coming to us as a volunteer, wanted mm -hmm. to volunteer, um, I do try and sit with them individually and kind of get a sense of what are they looking to do. Do mm -hmm. they want to produce a program? Do they want to just run a camera? Mm -hmm. Do they want, want to learn how to, how to edit? Um, or volunteer in some other capacity. But um, essentially, we haven't been running classes. We're a small station. Mm -hmm. It's a little hard to get classes together. Mm -hmm. But if somebody comes in and they want to learn to produce a program, one of the first things that I do try and get them to do is to come in and just watch how we put together a program. Mm -hmm. You know, we have cameras, camera operators, what do they do? Uh, we have a director, we have a host, we have a guest. How does this all work? And, you know, kind of introduce them to the concepts, uh, at least, you know, how we're doing things mm -hmm. here. And, and then, you know, if they want to take out a camera, we will do some camera training. We do have field cameras that can be checked out, and they operate differently than the studio cameras. And they can bring these cameras to any other location. Mm -hmm. So if there's a speaker happening at the library or at another location that they want to video, something for their group and organization, a concert, mm -hmm. as long as they have mm -hmm. approvals uh, t to videotape. And it is up to the producer of the program to get those releases. Mm -hmm. They're the ones okay. that are responsible for the content of the program. Mm -hmm. Um, but essentially, it's working with people individually, seeing where they would like to fill in, what they would like to do, and really try and work with them individually and, and find a good place for them. And why do you think it's a good idea for a business or an organization or an individual to do a program on the station? What's in it for them? Well, so, certainly some people want to share their expertise mm -hmm. or, or do a how-to. And, you know, the, it's a good way to have your freedom of speech. And for a business, I mean, it's nice to have that exposure and that sure. familiarity now mm -hmm. um, out there. And you, even though we do non-commercial programming, as far as businesses are concerned, there's a lot of things that can be talked about that isn't advertising, that is not commercial, um, whether it's your history in the business or what are the trends in, in, um, in your business? Mm -hmm. What are the things, you know, what kind of things would you want to share with the public that's not giving away your mm -hmm. secrets? Mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, I mean, when you show that, um, that you know this, then it's going to have people come in and say, okay, I'm, 
I've heard a little background. I think this person knows what they're talking about, and it's a good good way to do business. Mm -hmm. And do you have any idea what your viewership is? Well, we do know how many households are cable subscribers. And in Simsbury, it's about 7,500 uh, households mm -hmm. that are subscribers. Um, we don't get um, any kind of numbers from Comcast. They're not able to tell us mm -hmm. what people are watching, how many households are watching. The only thing that we can actually count ourselves are um, the hits that we get on the videos that we've posted mm -hmm. on, on the website. So no, unfortunately, we don't have any numbers for that. But I will say, even though we don't have numbers, there has been a, a regular trend with um, people who have appeared on a program as a guest, as a host, and they may come back into SCTV after we've aired their program for a while, and almost always the stories that I get back, I was in the grocery store and somebody stopped me and said, I saw you on SCTV. <laughs> so we know people are watching. Yep. We don't know exactly when they're watching, what they're watching yeah, exactly, unless that. we get some feedback. Yeah. And of course, you know, we're here. Mm -hmm. We'd love to hear feedback from people if indeed they have anything yeah. to say. Yeah. I know you've heard that from me for sure. Yeah. yeah. So with the technology that we have today, a lot of people are, are filming videos themselves. So if someone comes to you and says, I've got this video I produced myself, can you air it on the station? Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the short answer. Mm -hmm. The longer answer, let's say there's a program produced a, at another access station. As long as you have a Simsbury resident uh, sponsor your video, it mm -hmm. can also air on the channel. Let's say you created a program, you edited it at home, it's available in a, on a DVD or even just in a digital mm -hmm. file. We have a channel use agreement, some paperwork um, that's also available on our website. and that needs to be filled out. Mm. Um, the producer is always the owner of the video and um, basically you're licensing us to air the video on the channel. Um, we do ask a couple of questions, one of them being is it suitable for young children and that just has to do with the hour of the day that we would put it on the air. If it's not suitable for young children, it'll go on after 10 p.m. And do you have any requirements for those programs, though? What, what, you know, anything that people can or can't say or do in their program? Actually, not really. I mean, there is a disclaimer that we run mm -hmm. so that everybody understands that the material on this program is, is the producer's responsibility. It is not SCTV. We don't choose material. We don't censor material. So if you fit the requirements of a Simsbury resident and it's in a digital format that I can use and you filled out the paperwork, we're required to put it on the channel. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. that, that's, that's really where the law really? protects your First Amendment right of free speech. That's interesting. Are you required to put it on a certain number of times or can you just show it once? And do you no, know? We, we haven't... Um, we haven't made any specific guidelines for numbers of airing. Mm. Uh, we do try and schedule enough programming on the channel so that when somebody turns on the channel, unless it's at four in the morning, uh, we may not have anything on the air at that point, but we do try and um, run something on the channels as regularly as we can mm -hmm. um, without repeating things too many times, though um, I, I know that's always um, something that you would be apt to do with a program that's only going to air, you know, it's a special, you're only going to have it that one time where you'd like to see it get mm -hmm. lots of airings. We don't have any um, hard rules um, for that. And of course, in between programs, we're also running our community calendar scroll of announcements. So at least when you turn on the channel, there is something there. Mm -hmm. And there might be some organizations or businesses that maybe don't want to do an entire program, but they just want to get an announcement of something special they have going on, of an event or a promotion or something. Uh, and tell me what you can do for those businesses or organizations. We do have a program called Headline Simsbury that is produced every two weeks, and it's a mixture of announcements, 
Uh, we may have a how-to uh, video from uh, the hardware store. Uh, we've got um, somebody from the senior center coming in to do senior center announcements. Mm -hmm. And if you have a, a short form, and I'm talking five minutes or less, mm -hmm. um, a, a, an announcement for an upcoming event, as long as it's open to the public, it's not a, you know, a commercial type um, of, a, of an event. And that's the sort of thing that we would put on the Headlines program. It's a great platform for these short form pieces. I mean, additionally, we have the capacity to actually put on short videos. Mm -hmm. um, so if I had a 10 minute video that somebody produced, I mean, if I have space in between programs, I can schedule that. Mm -hmm. And so we have the capacity to do it. It's always just a matter of how much time do we have? How much time do mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. to schedule that? Because we also can run PSAs, public service announcements, things that you would see um, on commercial television, mm. um, as long as they're not advertisements, but they're public service announcements. Mm -hmm. And so we can do those as well. But it does take extra time to um, to take the time and schedule all of those. Right, sure. Do you do any live programming? We haven't done any live programming from the studio here in quite a while. The last live program we did was a number of elections ago. Mm. Um, but the municipal meetings Everything that comes from the town hall, for the most part, unless there's two meetings going on at the same time, we do all of those meetings live. Um, and we are also um, trying to get permanently in place the way for us to go live from other locations, like the <coughs> library and Eno. And we have been having some, some success with that. It, it's, it's always um, a little bit of, a, of an experiment still because of the um, bandwidth issue. If we don't have enough bandwidth to push that live signal through, mm. uh, then we have other problems. Mm -hmm. And so we're still working out some of the bugs with that. But, um, but yes, usually the live meetings from the town hall, those are, those are uh, pretty regularly d done live. Um, not so much from the studio, but I can't. There's not that many people who have really approached us to say, "I'd really like to do a live program." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's very different than a taped program. I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in this technological age, I would imagine that there are, things change rapidly in this field. So, what kind of changes do you see coming up for the station? Do you have anything planned? Um, we have. We still haven't finished our whole switching to HD, high def, from standard def. We still have a couple of pieces of equipment that um, still need to be upgraded. Um, that's been a long-term upgrade because of the tremendous expense mm. uh, for some of these pieces of gear. So um, I know that's not new technology uh, to most people in, in the world, but for the station, for the station. It, it is well we just you just don't have the money to ditch everything that you have and buy mm -hmm. all new stuff right, right. and all HD right. so we so our um, our field equipment is HD and our studio cameras are HD but we still have to switch over the video switcher and uh, some of the stuff at town hall as well mm -hmm. um, but I think other than that um, we are um, looking to get a, a mobile app also for the website and technology. I think that was about it for okay. this for this point. Okay. You and I have known each other for a while, I think probably going back to about 2007 when I had my travel business and I used to do a, a series of programs on the station. And I think it took you a couple of years <laughs> of going after me and after me and after me to finally talk me into doing the program because I was so nervous about it and I would just get you know, butterflies in my stomach. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm sure there are probably a lot of people out there that feel like they have some really good information that they'd like to share with people, but they just can't get over that hump of being able to do it and getting past their, their self-consciousness and nervousness. So do you have any pointers for them? Well, I don't bite. Um, <laughs> I, I do try and make the studio, uh, you know, a comfortable environment. It, it's not intimidating. It, it's sort of warm and friendly. It's on the small side. Um, so try just to be accessible in that respect. Um, 
I think the one thing that I would say helps tremendously in the process, if if you are the type of person like myself where, geez, let me put some thought into that, let me write something intelligent, and then put it on the teleprompter. Yeah. Okay, yeah. now I can read it and not have to necessarily think about it all. Right. Okay, so there's your opening to the program, use the teleprompter, and then right. use it to close right. up the program. Right. Once you sort of get going in a, in a dialogue with questions and answers, I've had so many people say, gosh, that half hour went by mm -hmm. fast. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, but they're, they're passionate and knowledgeable about what they do, and so that time goes by quickly. Right, right. But I think, uh, I think having the teleprompter is, um, I think yeah. that's a main, one of the main things that does make this a little easier. Yeah, um, definitely be prepared. And I, I learned once I came and did it, I realized it was really no big deal. And I said, my God, why haven't I been doing this the whole time? It was, it was really very, very easy and very comfortable, not uncomfortable at all. So we just have a minute left. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us about the station? Well, that we are always looking for volunteers mm -hmm. and that we really appreciate people's financial support. Um, we, we do want to stick around and, and do this um, for as long as possible. I mean, again, that First Amendment right of free speech, I, I know people sort of forget about that, but this is, this is a platform. This is your soapbox. Yeah. This is where you can come and, and learn and, and have fun with it, too. I mean, yeah. it's supposed to be fun. It is. We, we it do is have fun. fun. Yeah. Well, you provide a wonderful service to the town, Karen. Thank you so much for all that you do. Really appreciate it, and I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you. I am Lisa Gray, Executive Director with the Simsbury Chamber of Commerce, and I've been sharing my program today with Karen Hanville, Station Manager of SCTV. Thank you so much for joining us. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.